then you turned your attention, as you say, to, to DMT, uh, which led to your book, DMT, the spirit molecule. Um, how did, I mean, you effectively were the first person kind of starting this psychedelic renaissance at that point. Um, how did you, it's quite a bold thing to do, you know, how did you actually get the ball rolling on getting a study like this out there? Um, <clears throat> well, the first new study you know, took place in Germany, actually, about a year before ours, and they studied mescaline. Um, you know, but our study was the first new study in uh, the States uh, in a generation. Um, and we studied DMT. And, um, and we also studied psilocybin. Most people, I, you know, um, I haven't written all that much about our you know, psilocybin work. You know, but we uh, started a uh, uh, you know, psilocybin study as well. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, it was a long, slow process to get uh, my DMT study off the ground. Um, you know, I moved to New Mexico to work at the university in Albuquerque you know, for you know, the reason that it was off the radar. It was a small school, um, but still strong scientifically. And uh, you know, quite libertarian. Uh, they let you do what you wanted to do as long as you could, uh, you know, support your arguments, um, or you know, support um, your proposal with uh, reasonable arguments. Um, and you know, I started thinking about you know doing a human psychedelic you know drug research study um, or studies um, when I was 20 years old. I was uh, in you know college. So it was, uh, I mean, it was a long-term goal. It was a, uh, you know, dream, which I, you know, kept, uh, you know, burning uh, or at least, you know, simmering, uh, you know, for a long time, for almost 20 years. Um, and I believed I could do that work more comfortably in New Mexico. Uh, I wouldn't be receiving the same you know, kind of media attention. There wouldn't be, uh, the scrutiny at the university, you know, level that we were stepping into something too controversial. Um, and I was also, you know, fortunate in being, you know, trained in clinical psychopharmacology research. Uh, I spent a year fellowship at, at UC San Diego. My first, you know, two years in New Mexico were on, you know, training funds as well to do the melatonin study. Uh, and I you know, cut my teeth. I became a you know, successful junior clinical researcher. Uh, you know, so I was in a in uh, well, so I was at the right you know place at the right time. Um, in anticipation of my DMT or any kind of you know psychedelic work, I hadn't yet settled on DMT. You know, but in the meantime, uh, you know, during my fellowship, I you know, wrote a chapter for a book on adverse effects of psychedelic drugs, adverse reactions to LSD, uh, you know, because I knew ultimately at some point I would need to uh, respond to concerns that psychedelics were unsafe, that they couldn't be used, you know, safely in humans. You know, so I read 200, you know, papers on, you know, on adverse effects to psychedelics. Uh, and it was a strong chapter and my mentors at the time said, oh, this could be a standalone scientific paper. You know, why don't you write it up that way? You know, so I did. And it was, uh, you know, published in uh, you know, 1984. Um, and, you know, so that was, you know, four years before I began the you know, paperwork to do my DMT project. And, you know, that, you know, paper, you know, figured, you know, prominently in my discussion of, you know, how to manage adverse effects. Can these drugs be given safely? I, you know, those kinds of issues. Um, you know, so the science was good. It, it was impeccable science. It uh, was, you know, based on human pharmacology and the huge advances in animal pharmacology with respect, you know, to the psychedelics. Uh, you know, Prozac was, you know, developed, you know, because of studies in animals with LSD, you know, more or less. Uh, you know, serotonin was discovered because of LSD. Um, well, you know, the relationship of, you know, serotonin, um, you know, to, you know, consciousness, you know, to mental, you know, function, uh, you know, was elucidated by studying LSD. 
Um, you know, so there was a huge amount of animal data, a, a large amount of human, uh, you know, data, you know, which had, you know, uh, you know, begun being accumulated during the first wave of studies, but, you know, which halted uh, with these drugs being scheduled in, uh, you know, 1970. You know, so I, you know, basically, you know, said we, uh, you know, these are the most interesting, you know, drugs in psychiatry. We've not studied them for 20 years in humans. And, you know, why not? And, you know, these are the questions I want to ask, you know, what receptors, what part of the brain, uh, you know, what are the effects uh, on the heart, on endocrine system, all kind of, you know, basic questions. Um, we stay clear of therapy. Uh, we only studied your know, normal, you know, uh, you know, normal volunteers. Uh, we stayed clear of mystical states. Uh, we just said, you know, this is a clinical psychopharmacology study, you know, dose response work. And I had been, you know, trained in, you know, in, uh, 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 you know, doing, you know, neuroendocrine, uh, you know, dose response work. You know, my mentor at UNM was a pediatric neuroendocrinologist, uh, you know, not a psychiatrist. You know, so he is like, you know, hardcore, you know, you know, there are hormones, there's the brain, there's the relationship between the two, and you have to uh, be, you know, precise in your thinking. Um, yeah, you know, so it was a strong study. It was, a, and uh, yeah, it, it, you know, was a straightforward and strong study. Uh, just, you know, you know, kind of your meat and potatoes, you know, so the study got, you know, funded by, I had, you know, two grants, uh, you know, before I even, uh, you know, possessed DMT, uh, you know, the war on, you know, drugs, the National Institutes of Health, uh, you know, supported the work and the Scottish Rite Foundation of the Masons uh, supported the work, uh, you know, so the main, you know, problem was to get the DMT. And, you know, that was a, you know, two-year process of uh, working with, you know, federal, you know, regulators and, uh, you know, you know, the DEA and the FDA, you know, so, you know, once I, you know, found someone, Dave Nichols at Purdue that wanted to make, or was agreeable to make DMT, uh, it just was a, you know, back and forth, just all these phone calls and paperwork and things like that. Um, yeah. And we, you know, finally, you know, got, you uh, you know, the drug, it was approved and we began the study in late 1990.